Okay, so this uh, screencast is looking at some um, applications of quadratics. Uh, that's actually the reference is exercise 2K, page 55 of the Buchanan Standard Level Mathematics textbook. Okay, so what we've been doing in class, we've been looking at, uh, we looked at question one, which dealt with the uh, path of a, a stone or a ball or something, we looked at maximum height, etc. Uh, question two is asking, for, or it gives you the area of a rectangle in terms of uh, 32x minus x squared, which is right there. It tells you that's equal to 252, so it's really just a matter now of solving this equation. So we take x squared across, becomes x squared, take 32x, so that becomes minus 32x. Everything's been taken to the right, plus 252 equals zero. Um, now on inspection, the uh, that that factorizes, um, and actually you can see my work over here, I've worked out the discriminant of this quadratic and I found it to be 16 which told me that it, since it's a square number uh, it told me that it will factorize so um, I persisted and I got minus 18 and minus 14 it did the job for me so x is 18 or x equals 14 so the dimensions of the picture are 18 by 14 centimeters if we scroll down here to question 4 it talks about a, a rectangular portrait here in black uh, 50 by 70 and then a, a, a frame around it of width, uh, equal width, uh, all the way around. So, so I let that width be x, as you can see there in the diagram. Um, and so red is my frame. And and, I'm, and we're told that the red area is the same as the black area. Obviously, it uh, doesn't look like it is here, but, you know, it's a scale. And it's obviously not been drawn to scale. But the, the area of the portrait, that's something we can work out. That's 3,500 centimetres squared. There it is right there, I've written that down. And then we've looked at the, uh, well, the area of the frame is equal to that. Now the area of the frame, I figured, was, uh, if this is 70, and these little end bits are x each, then that's 70 minus plus 2x along here. And if that's 50, and that's x, and that's x, so that's 50 plus 2x. So I reckon the area of the whole thing, uh, from the outside of the frame all the way in, is 50 plus 2x plus by 70 plus 2x, but the area of the red bit will be that product minus 3500 minus the, the black in the middle. So I went and did this um, expansion, subtracted 3500, and got this area, this here, 4x squared plus 240x, uh, which is I've written here, it's the, the frame area in red, and and then I'm making that equal to 3,500 because we're told that that area will be equal to the black area. That's the portrait area in black. So now I'm just I'm solving the equation 4x squared plus 240x equals 3,500. So now bring the 3,500 over so I've got 0 on the right. I divide through by 4 and I get x squared plus 60x minus 875 equals 0. I again work out the discriminant to be 7,100 and that is not a square number. So I, um, I'm resigned to the fact I've, uh, I've got a quadratic, use a quadratic formula here, and to two decimal places, my value of x is 12.13, and I ignore the negative value of x. I add that onto 70 and 50, and I've got the new dimensions of my, um, of my frame. Okay, down to question five, which says the length of a rectangle is five, to five less than three times its width. So I let the width be x. And therefore, the length is 5 less than 3 times of it, so 3x minus 5. I then work out the area to be x by 3x minus 5 to be equal to 782. As you can see over here, that's my working. So expanding it out and collecting, making it equal to 0 again. Um, see, that's really important. Um, and then look at the discriminant, which has become my practice. Again, it is a... It is a square number, so it means I can factorise as it happens. Um, I've just gone into the into the quadratic formula: five plus ninety-seven, it's one hundred and two over six, which is seventeen. So x equals seventeen. There's a negative that I've ignored. So if x is seventeen, my width is seventeen, and my length is forty-six, and they're my dimensions. Down to question six, we're looking at the the sum of the squares of three consecutive positive odd integers. So I've let my smallest positive odd integer be x. Then the next positive odd integer is x plus 2. And the one after that is x plus 4. If we square each of those, 
look at the expansions of those and collect my like terms. You can see my working out here with ticks. Um, we get 3x squared plus 12x plus 20 equals 251. Bring that 251 over. There's my working through there. Divide by 3. Factorizes to x plus 11, x minus 7. We can ignore the minus 11 because, again, we know that x is smallest positive. We know that... that uh, we know that x is positive, so x must be 7, which means my three integers are 7, 9, and 11. And if you look at the squares of each of those to check, you get 251. What is my little check there was to square each of them. 49, 81, that's 121, that's equal to 251, so that checks out. So that's all very good. Um, and so hopefully uh, that gets, there's just a couple more questions. Um, but we might have a look at those in, uh, in, in our next lesson. Okay, see you then.